What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Make Your Kingdom, which is a new city building, fortress building, logistics, banished meets defense uh, type game that has released this week. It's in early access right now. I played the prologue, which was about an hour long, and got that all knocked out, and so I'm ready to dive on in and share the game with all of you. As of right now, we are chilling on our map right now. We're hanging out. We haven't deployed anything, but I should probably do my spiel at the beginning of the video like I always do. If you want to check this game out, it's available down below in the description. It's a very charming little city castle defense game. Aside from that, you can also take a look down in the description if you wanted to look at my Discord or my Twitch stream. You can swing through any time for cuddles. Uh, but let's get started, shall we? We've got about 25-30 minutes to play with, and I want to use it well. As with most of these games, the first thing I gotta do is put my castle in. I kind of wanted to look for an area, though, that has, like, berries and stuff so that my people can forage for a little bit before things go kind of haywire on us. Uh, there, we've got a nice little buildable zone right here. We've got a cool little peninsula over on this side that might be kind of rad to play around with. I tend to look for, like, interesting geographic locations when I play games like this. Things that are interesting. I love this right here. This is cool. Lumber will be a problem. And, like, this little strip area over here will make building a little messy, but it is defensible. It's like big time defensible. I also, let's see, we've got kind of like a little rounded out area over here. We got something looking good on this side with this little lake. I kind of like that. We could have the castle back up to the lake or maybe like put it over here. Yeah, that seems all right to me. Let's put it in. Let's do it. All right, so down it goes. The first thing that's going to happen after we deploy our castle is a friendly airship is going to show up. And there it is. You get a fun little cinematic to invite you on into the game. Ba -ba 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 -ba, flying with balloons. My ship is made out of a tree's butt cheek. Uh -uh -uh. So this is going to drop off our first villagers, the people that we're going to be applying to tasks and whatnot, just in case we want to keep them, you know, moving along. This game does have an interesting mechanic where I can take control of one of these little guys. Oh, that guy got a piggyback right all the way in. He must be the king. I can't be expected. Oh, yeah, put me in control mode. So there you go. I'm controlling my little mohawked king right now. They're going to drop a whole bunch of resources over here. You can use control mode to actually, like, help out and, like, bring supplies over to the main building area if you want. I wouldn't. Right now, I'd probably use this time to set up, like, some infrastructure and kind of get us up and moving with, like, our basic... What are you guys doing way the hell over there? Don't do that. Why are you guys over there? Oh, no, dude. They deployed on the other side of the woods. We're going to have to extricate them from this situation. Oh, but we don't have production commands yet until the building's done. Oh, no. This might be, like, all on us right here. This might be a thing that we have to do, like, single-handedly because they can't get over here. Oh, no. All right, I'm going to grab this big rock right here, and I'm going to bring it on over to the castle. Let's do it. There we go. King in the castle. King in the castle. All right, we'll grab that right there. Well, the good news is it does look like our little guys can actually get through the forest. I keep sealing them file on through. My worry was that they were actually, like, hard stuck on the other side, but it looks like they can actually, like, manage their way through the woods, ranger style. And we'll go ahead and speed up the game for a second just so we can get the castle done. Actually, I really, really like this little building animation right here. So the stuff you bring over to the castle turns into little cubes in midair, and then it actually, like, moves, and they assembled all this stuff out of the cubes that are made out of these little guys right here, which is actually, like, a really, really cool feature. I like that. The incremental building is one of those things that I always really enjoy when they incorporate it into a game. Now we have production available, so we want to chop down some trees. This forest has got to go because this is, like, our equitable building space. And so, like, I think we're going to... Oh, I don't think we can actually do that until we put in a sawmill. Okay, well, let's get the sawmill in then. We'll put the sawmill, like, right here. And then everything in this game kind of needs to be co connected with a road. Like, roads are going to be the infrastructure. Like, buildings that are not connected to a road will not function properly. And then once the sawmill is up and ready to rip and ride, we'll go ahead and start knocking out some of these trees with some of our peasants. We can set up berries, so that's good. Uh, berries are kind of weird. Your guys aren't going to bring them back to storage. So, like, it threw me for a loop. The first time I played the game, I would queue up the berries, and, like, I never saw them go, like, get the berries, except for, like, one time. And there's a reason for that. They only go get the berries when they're hungry. Like, the berries are not meant to be, like, a long-term food solution. They're just meant to be there as a stopgap until you get your production line set up so that you can get, like, grain and turn it into bread and, like, all of that sort of fun stuff. I don't know where I want to build at. We are going to have to chop down some of this before too long. 
And people are going to get extra strength grumpy pants with us if we don't supply the things that they need pretty shortly. But in goes the lumber mill. There we go. Lumber mill is good to go. Let's assign some workers to this bad boy. And now, if they have logs, they'll turn those into planks. And so we need to kind of like, you know, disregard the constabulary, acquire logs. Uh, I'm going to wipe out this entire area of trees over here. Like, I'm just going to queue the whole damn thing up. So there we go. Uh, this is going to be the principal area where I think I build my city. I may have, like, some limited mining ops and things like that back around on this side, maybe. Because you need to have a mountain nearby in order to set up a mine. Which, in fact, is probably what we should do next. Is there, like, a spot that it likes for the mine? Got one over there. Or we can do it, like, kind of on that spot and, like, that spot alone. Can I do anything over here? Oh, I can get one right there. Very nice. Okay, so we'll have one right there then. Perfect. I actually really, really... Oh, my log just ran away into the sea. I am a free log. I shall not be restrained by being fastened into construction. Nay, I go to float the open sea for the foreseeable future. He's gone. He's left us. This game is kind of freewheeling, in case you were wondering. Like, you don't really do much other than assign people to jobs. Like, for most of the holler tasks and stuff, they do a pretty good job at just sort of, like, doing their own thing. Like, when it comes to chopping down trees, anybody that doesn't have a job will go chop down a tree. Anybody that doesn't have a job will go gather berries. Like, you don't really have to stress about it altogether that much. I'm hoping that lumberjacking will begin to proceed before too long. They're sitting at 12 out of 12 right now, and they haven't hauled any of it back. And so that's probably fine. I'll more than likely have like a little road that runs out this way maybe. Something like that right there. And then maybe we'll connect it on this side. Uh, so that we've got like a little housing division over here that'll make people a little bit happier. Like they'll have a place to live. Basically like a little subdivision. Uh, because people do like having houses. When they don't have one, they get kind of grumpy. Uh, you do have arrows. That's one of my pet peeves with games is I don't like it when you can't tell what the facing is on a particular ghost of a building. I really like the fact that by default in their early access, they already have like the ghost arrows uh, basically showing you uh, which way the buildings are facing. That's absolutely fantastic. So that's like an area of critique that has already been skirted around and no longer has to be concerned about. The other thing that we're going to need is we're going to need a well. Pretty much everything in this game needs, like, water or some kind of, like, fluid in order for, like, production to function. So we'll just slam in a little well right here behind the castle so that all the people that live in these houses will have access to well water. And then on top of that, once we get to pro a production that necessitates, like, having water, uh, we'll be good to go on that front, too. The next thing we need is we definitely need a civilian market. The market is the place where basically all goods end up, and if any of your villagers need any of those objects in order to increase their happiness, or otherwise stave off death, or keep themselves warm, or get themselves new clothing, they will go to the market and they will acquire it from there. And so the market is going to be, oh, we can have like a trading dock. Sweet, dude. I actually didn't see that when I was playing the tutorial. It looks like we can fit one in right here, and I think that's actually a fairly decent spot for it. So we'll go ahead and slap that on in. As of right now, we have a little bit of a food supply. We have a little bit of wood rocking. I think with our mine, I should probably add, like, maximum workers right there to get that meter flowing faster so that we're producing stone at, like, a reasonable rate. Okay, so the market and our stone are now taken care of. At this point, our village will not grow, in case you were wondering about that. It will not get larger until we click this little button right here. And basically, we pay tribute to, like, neighboring kingdoms, and they will start sending us, like, their refugees and kind of, like, their extra people. This might actually work for farmland over here along the lake. Might work okay. Like, I don't know that that's going to be a perfect arrangement. Honestly, they haven't started in on this forest right here at all. So what we'll do is we'll collect, we'll connect a road right there. And then maybe we'll have a road run out this way. And then we'll kind of have a road run out, yeah, just along the water's edge right there, actually. That works pretty good. I like that. Uh, once we get this, oh, they're doing a little bit of logging right there. You can see a few, you, like, you can see a few loose cylinders of uh, tree butt kind of floating around over there. Uh, we want to prep, though, before people get here. And we kind of want to make sure everybody has a place to live before we go too crazy. So we'll put in a couple more houses right there. That'll give us a use for, like, some of the planks that are just sitting around in storage at the moment. And it pre-prepare... Well, I guess it prepares us. We don't need, like, a pre-prepare 
like preemptively preparing. I don't know. That all just seems redundant to me. That feels like maybe a little bit too much. But there's an airship right there. It's going to bring us a few more villagers. In fact, it brought us a buttload of villagers. One entire butt full of villagers is what has initially arrived here. And so we need to get this barn raising going. We all got to tr like trigger our inner Amish side and get these houses put together. Otherwise, it's just not going to work out. That'll get us up to 20 people that are able to live inside of houses. I'll probably just connect this with a road right here, too, because we don't really have much else going on with this spacing. I don't know if it's a good idea to have... Can I fit two houses in right here? It looks like I can. Let's get a couple more houses in over here. They're a little bit far from the well, but they've got premium real estate right next to the area's premier shopping zone. So with the houses out of the way, what we want to do next is we need to start setting up infrastructure... Oh, I guess they've got too many things sitting around over there. We need to set up infrastructure, so we need to start getting our first production lines running. And the first major production line that you should probably bail headlong into is going to be acquiring yourself food. Because that's one of those things like, food is sort of this esoteric idea. It's like fuel for humans. You know how you put gas in your car? Well, food is one of those unknown things that nobody's ever heard about. Nobody ever really talks about. It's not very popular. Uh, but people need that in order to continue surviving, and so we should probably make some of that if they would just move all of this refuse out of the way. Maybe, kinda. Alas, does not look like they're moving that out of the way, and I wanted a road to run down here so I could set up the farm over on this side, and we just have it zigzag down and have all of our various farm types over there. Since that's obviously not going to be a realistic solution for what we're trying to do right now, I'm going to have to improvise a little bit and do something different. So what we'll do... I kind of want to keep that clear for, like, residential. So we'll put it right there. That's a little bit of a truck to get the stuff to market, but... It'll do. We'll put the bakery, like, right here on this side, and hopefully that'll be satisfactory. I don't know why this house isn't getting built right here. Sometimes the AI does odd things. You may run into kind of, like, early access things with the pathing and with the AI logic. Occasionally, it's like, what are you doing right now? Like, what is what is your task at the moment? And the game's like, I don't know. And it's just sitting there eating a Slim Jim. That was kind of magical for a second. We were like levitating boards in midair without actually slotting them into place. Sweet. Apparently we have wizards as a part of our as a part of our retinue out here. So that needs one more stone. All right. I can do this. Oh look, I've got like a little crown now. Sweet, dude. Is it because we don't have no stones? Now we got stones. I'll put the stones in myself. There we go. Done. See, and now we just hang out right here, and we help build this. We get knocked around by flying detritus and debris. Dude, these streets are really narrow. I don't like this at all. I'm not, like, claustrophobic, but that's a really tight street right there. I'll say this. I don't feel safe walking down this street. I'll be honest with you. I just makes me feel a little bit nervous. Uh, we've got our farm up, so what we need to do now is we need to put down some fields that will actually come from this farm. And how many can I have? Let's take that up. We can have 12 fields that we can actively maintain. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There we go. We have all of our fields filled out. And what you'll see is little farmers will come out here, and they'll throw some seeds on the ground, and they'll kind of do their thing. I do like that some of the buildings, like the farms, they come with, like, little chickens and stuff that, like, wander around and make the area seem a little bit more lively and, like, awake. That's good. This is a game that has, like, a really, really nice sense of being alive and active. And I think that's a thing. Sometimes you get, like, a city builder, but it's, like, very sterile. Like, you don't see a whole lot of movement happening in between villagers just walking along roads looking like bots. Whereas this game, you have people, like, standing around on thoroughfares. You have somebody's pet chicken, you know, Dave, walking around. Just, like, hanging out and being a friend. I don't know what season it is right now. It's summer. Okay, we're going to need a few more things before winter gets here. We're going to need a charcoal burner. That's going to be one major thing that we're going to end up needing. We're also going to need to have a... Oh, cool, we have storage right there. All right, we're going to need a mill. The mill's going to allow us to, like, knock out food. And so I'll put the mill right there real fast just to make sure everybody's hustling and getting things done. 
In addition, probably a really good idea to get a charcoal burner. Historically, charcoal burners, they weren't allowed to live like inside the confines of town. They had to go live way along the edges of town, uh, much like the tanner, uh, because it produced a stink. It was very, very smelly. And, as I recall, charcoal burners could only set up because you need water in order, you need a water source, basically, in order to make charcoal properly. I don't know the exact way that you do it. I've never made charcoal except for, like, putting it in a tin and kind of, like, making it that way, like, on a very small scale. But, like, mass-producing charcoal usually requires that you have a water source that has flowing water. And there was very specific tributaries that were usually assigned by the local lord to be used for charcoal only, and then everything else was, like, drinking water and stuff like that. Uh, the architect's house is probably a really good idea. I'd say we could probably take an architect's house around here. Looks like we can squeeze one in, like, right here, but it'll kind of mess with my grid-like structure. Oh, there's actually a good spot for him right there. There we go. Uh, the architect's house, what he does is he wanders around and he fixes buildings. Otherwise, you got to do it manually, like a little bubble will pop up and be like, bloop, and then you got to click on the little hammer or whatever. And it just basically gets rid of busy work. Like, this guy automates, like, a task that you're going to have to do at some point. Did we get our first wheat harvest in? It doesn't look like we got our first wheat harvest in. I would like for all these trees to go so that I can run a road back here and maybe put, like, the barn back there for food storage, possibly. But either way, we're off to a decent start right now. Another little detail they have is every single production building stores its own production. And in fact, the stacks do get larger for each increment of like one that they put inside of there. That's a really good attention to detail. That's the kind of thing that I look for in city builders is little details. I'm not interested in seeing a number go up that says I have grain. I'm, I'm more interested in like seeing the grain actually sitting inside my granary and being able to eyeball it. Uh, the bakery is up and running right now, too, so for the first time, we are officially producing food. The downside is that the well is really far from here, so we may actually have to make, like, an extra sort of dedicated well just for this guy and this guy alone. But since he's responsible for, like, cooking up all of our vittles that are going to keep our people from, like, rioting and, you know, singing songs like, Do You Hear the People Sing? Or, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like, I would rather not be guillotined before we even get established. Like, we're not even that far into our frontier journey right now. And, you know, there's always that looming threat of just, like, bladed objects falling towards my neck if I do a bad job as a noble. And so I prefer to kind of do a good job as a noble. Now, let's go ahead and we'll assign a couple of builders over here to go through and make sure these places get patched up. And in fact, I'm not going to manually repair them right now because I want to see if they do it on their own. And in fact, they do. There's our little builder right there. He came out with his wood, and he placed his wood on top of that guy's house, and everybody inside was like, hey, why are you placing wood on top of my house? And he was like, don't worry about it. My wood is professional. And he just let it ride. Let it ride. Okay, let's go ahead and set up a little bit. There we go. Oh, I guess roads will actually destroy trees. Okay. We've almost got it hooked up over here, so that's nice. Unfortunately, I don't think this is wide enough for us to get, like, a double spacing of houses. That's okay. We can use this little area as, like, a public garden to make, like, decorations and stuff and really make the place pop and come alive. I'm all right with it. Food supply has bounced back in a big way. Uh, as of right now, all we really need are more casas. And so I'm going to go ahead and drop some on in. Can I shift-click these in? I cannot shift-click those in. Okay. Well, that's a good thing to verify. I would recommend they add shift-clicking for putting in buildings that are similar. So you can just boop, 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 slam them out. In addition, you've got smoke coming out of the chimneys right here. I think that, like, every single season should have, like, a procedurally generated direction that the wind blows and the smoke will all blow in unison that way. A little immersive details, stuff like that. I was playing a game called Ostriv that has that, where every single day, like, basically the wind changes directions and every single house with a stack on it, like, the they all blow in unison kind of in the same direction with slight variations from, like, sort of, like, wind turbidity happening and knocking it kind of to the side. It was a little detail that was actually really cool and caught my eye that I had never seen before inside a game. I'm sure some other game has done it, but I hadn't seen it until I played Ostriv, and I was like, oh, dude, that was super rad. I enjoyed that. 
We've got like a nice little burgeoning hamlet right now. It's looking pretty good. I'm actually like fairly happy with how this is going. They want me to build a trading dock? I don't have any experience with that particular building. I can do it, but I haven't done that before. Like this game, call it follows kind of like a, a structure where like you build up a town and at a certain point, you're gonna be able to build an airships, an airship assembly sort of yard. And once you do that, you can continue playing like your own map or you can go to a new procedurally generated map. Apparently Blake starved to death. Why would Blake do that? There's food in the market. Go forth and achieve thy food, my friend. I'm probably going to tell them to prioritize making, yeah, prioritize grain no matter what. Prioritize bread no matter what. I don't know why somebody starved to death. We have food. It's inside the stockpile. It's like it's too far. I can't handle the long walk. It's possibly the guy that didn't have a house, actually, because he didn't have, like, a central repository that he could get food from. I bet you that's what it was. Uh, where's my coal burner at? Where, did I ever actually put in the coal burner? Uh-oh. Coal burner? I may have gotten sidetracked and forgotten to put in our coal burner. I should probably do that now. I think I did get sidetracked. It's not great. We need a lot of coal to make it through the winter. We may not have enough. Like, with building time taken into account... I mean, it's still summer. Like, we're not entirely into fall just yet. That season of kind of blowing leaves and kind of orange and reds and all that fun stuff. Fall is my favorite season. I don't know about you guys, but fall, I have a favorite season, okay? It's a thing that I, as a grown man, have. I have a favorite season. And my favorite season is fall. My favorite seasoning is garlic. I like garlic and I like cumin. Those are my two favorite seasonings. But, you know, my favorite season is fall. I'm guessing the trading dock is probably going to be used for generating revenues so that we can make our money. And so let's take a look and see if we can maybe set up this trading dock. So it looks like the trading dock does not place on water. It looks like the trading dock sets up over here. Which is like fine by me, but I was thinking maybe it would extend out into the water and we'd be sending stuff off on boats. I'll more than likely export boards for right now and export stone since that's like the two things that we have a whole bunch of. Oh, these houses are ready for upgrade. Nice. Uh, so the buildings in this game all have upgrades. Once they get to like a certain level of happiness, they follow kind of the, the Anno style of gameplay where they are available for upgrading and they get better. People are going to start looking for coal over here. Unfortunately, we can only have one guy making coal for right now. But it looks like with the transit time, they should be able to bring it over like in a satisfactory way. We may want to build two coal burners over here just to make sure we have that amount of coal. But... Wait, that's not attached to a road? It looked like it attached to the road. Alright, well I just looped a road around it real fast. With some of the space constraints we have, it's not exactly like ideal with where it's sitting right now. We've got kind of like a, a very thin strip of land to play around with, but I do like the glow effects and whatnot that they've got going on. The bloom looks good. The presentation of the game is actually very, very charming. I, I could see myself playing this a whole bunch once the early access is developed a little bit, and it's got like a bunch more like buildings and supply chains and everything else to play around with. It's also got a defensive aspect, like there is a military window right here. You're going to be building walls and turrets and stuff like that because you do get attacked. However, from what I've been able to glean, the combat is, like, really far into the game. Like, some people had said that they've played for three hours or so, and they still haven't hit, like, combat yet as, like, a thing that they can do. And so, anyways, we're only on the second map right now. I played the first map by myself to get my footing, and then I moved to this one, and it seems like it has added, like, extra things. Yeah, it seems like it has added extra things. Like, the storehouse, I didn't have that on my last run. I didn't have the barn either. Oh, a sheep farm. That might be good for, like, food. Okay, so we can get trade going. Let's go ahead and take a look at, like, trade opportunities over here. So we can say what we want to export. I would say export stone. It looks like we actually only really get to export one thing. And since stone is infinitely replenishable out of this mountain, why not go for it? I don't know if people are going to come by in airships. Oh, they are. Okay, so, like, it's actually not a water dock. It's an airship dock. 
And so that guy's going to take it away, and then we get paid, like, four gold. Sweet. Yeah, on the last map, I didn't actually have to buy new villagers. They just came on their own, like, on a rotation. So I made the assumption that it was going to function like that forever. So it looks like there is actually, like, development and, like, a difference in between maps. When you get this done over here, it'll offer to, like, make an airship and let you move to the next map, which apparently is going to add some more mechanics to the game. We will start building these bad boys because that's an easy way to get some extra space. I haven't seen money come through from that stone purchase just yet. But they do have several blocks stacked up right there. So I'm thinking it'll probably be okay. I would like to build the storage yard. Yeah, go ahead and give me a storage yard right there. I'm a big fan of, like, storage paddocks and stuff in games like this. And that'll put it reasonably close to the lumber mill, and that'll also put it right next to the mine, so they aren't having to walk the stone all the way back to the castle or whatever just yet. Like, honestly, it probably didn't save that much efficiency, but still, I like the way it looks having piles of stuff around. It makes me happy. Ah, and I gotta sign things over here. Okay, we'll put stone in right there. We'll put logs in right there. And then maybe we'll put some extra coal in right here. That sounds good. Yeah, because he's sitting on full right now because everybody's houses are stocked. And I just absolutely love the way it actually puts everything in its place where it goes. And each individual thing takes up a space. Just beautiful. Good eye for detail. Love it. Looky there, our first upgraded house is coming together. This guy was playing a fun local game called Kick the Log. It's a sport. Like, we have sponsorship deals and stuff. I think we got Pepsi. I'm pretty sure we got sponsored by Monster Energy Drinks. So, you know, if you wanna, if you really want to be at the cradle of innovation when it comes to the sport of Kick the Log, you really want to live here in this town. This is the place to be at. In addition, I did watch the money come in from our trading dock, so I do now know that we are actually producing money over here. As far as selling boards go, they're about the same amount of money. We can, we can sell wool, and we do have the capability to do that, so that would be a little bit more profitable. But I'll probably leave it alone for right now. There comes our money right there. Perfect. Uh, we need 65, though, if we want to actually get ourselves stocked up and get another batch of people to come live here. And so that's going to take some time. Next up on the list, I think we should probably make a sheep farm. Uh, the sheep farm is special. We don't have to make fields or anything for the sheep farm. Uh, the sheep farm just exists on its own, and the sheep just kind of live in the backyard, basically. Yeah, go ahead and trigger that one for upgrading. When we get our next batch of villagers, I'd like them to be able to slide straight into housing. You know what I mean? Like, as someone who has struggled to find housing my entire life, because it's all way overpriced and crazy expensive, living in a metropolitan area, I want to make sure that doesn't happen inside of my kingdom. I want people to come right on in and be like, damn, these rent prices are generous. I love living here, because once again, unhappy people have a tendency to make me sit my neck on a guillotine. I'm just, I'm focusing on the things that matter right now. Keeping my people happy so that I don't get guillotined. I'm doing the right thing, but I'm doing it out of a healthy sense of self-preservation. I do like how on the sidebar, it tells you your net change on all of these products. It can be very difficult with games like Banished and whatnot when they don't give you something like this that tells you the seasonal change in numbers. Uh, to things to figure out if you're actually producing enough of a thing to make everybody happy. I've played some other city builders where they don't have any type of line graph or they don't have any type of synopsis like that. And that's one of those games that's just like going to be cruising for disappointing their players when inevitably their food supply crashes. And they didn't realize why because like all they could really do was watch the net number. Which a lot of the times will lie to you in a game like this. So anyways, I like that they've got that right there. Honestly, I feel like they've got all the pieces in the right place for a very successful early access. The game is already infinitely charming. It's really good looking. I think the buildings could be diversified a little bit with their models just to imply what they do a little bit better. Like, they tend to run together a little bit when you're looking for, like, a particular building. Like, I feel like, you know, the sawmill right here... Like, they could get rid of this little awning right here. And I know that's the storage area where they keep all their logs or whatever. 
But I don't know, like, maybe add, you know, a big log on top of the building, like a big decorative log, you know what I mean? So it's like a log that's up on, like, a little Y-shaped stilt on either end so that you know that that's, like, a place where people make that. And then, like, this is obviously a mill, so that's perfectly fine. This is obviously a grain farm, so you don't need to worry about it too much. Like, the sheep farm would be cool if it, you know, I don't know, had, like, little decorations on it or something that made it look like a sheep farm. Like, it does have sheep around the back. You can see them right there. Well, you know. Like, something like a, a big sign or something that's got, like, wool on it. Or maybe, like, decorative wool on the roof. Or maybe, like, a big, you know, statue of a sheep that, like, runs along this inner edge right here. Or something like that. Or, like, maybe, like, a sheep statue on top of this little awning. But, like, other than that, I feel like they've got everything in the right place. Like, I keep looking for stuff that's, like, wrong with it. And I haven't found anything just yet. I think it's a charming little game. And it seems like most of the pieces of the puzzle for, like, a successful city builder are here already and so it seems like they started from the ground up with a strong foundation i'm looking I'm, I'm i'm definitely looking forward to seeing how the game develops because i am a banished addict i really really enjoy kind of city colony survival sims like this i'll see y'all later thank you for stopping on in my name is splattercat i sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to today up on the chopping block we have make your kingdom tomorrow we will have something else thank you for patronizing my channel i'm very very thankful that every single day you guys uh, line up to hear what I have to say about video games and check out the newest offerings in the indie world. I couldn't have asked for a better job. I really, really enjoy going to work every day, and you guys make that possible. So thank you. I'll see y'all later. Take care, everybody, and that's all I got.